So there are two sets of flexors um, for the toes in your foot. Uh, there's flexor digitorum brevis, which is the short flexor of the toes, and flexor hallucis brevis, which is the short flexor of the great toe. The brevis muscles insert near on the toe near the foot and they flex the toe at that first joint where the toe joins the foot. Um, they're called brevis because they're short. Flexor hallucis brevis um, runs underneath the bottom of the foot and inserts back here on the heel. And flexor digitorum brevis inserts here on each of the four toes and then runs back and joins together in a thick um, band of tissue called an aponeurosis, which is like a tendon, and it inserts also on the heel. But this is considered one muscle, flexor digitorum brevis, even though it breaks off into sort of like four branches and uh, connects to each of the four toes separately. Then there's the more powerful flexor of the, f the toes, flexor hallucis longus, which flexes that second joint of the toe, and flexor digitorum longus, which flexes the second joint of all of the other four toes. Um, the one they use most commonly for posterior tibial tendon replacement surgery is flexor digitorum longus. That's that flexor that flexes the second joint only of the toes. It runs from the second bone of each of the toes down underneath the foot, across the navicular bone, around the medial malleolus, and up the back of the leg where it attaches to the, the bones of the calf. Flexor hallucis longus attaches to that second bone of the toe, the distal or farther out bone of the toe, runs underneath the bottom of the foot, across the navicular bone, behind the medial malleolus, up the leg, and again, it attaches to the bones of the, the lower leg or in the calf. Flexor hallucis longus is probably the strongest flexor in the foot and would be a better choice for replacing the posterior tibial tendon, which is also a very, very powerful um, muscle, a very, very powerful tendon. However, the push off that we get from our great toe when we walk is so important to normal gait and running um, that most surgeons prefer to use the flexor digitorum longus. Flexor digitorum longus, um, you lose that push off from the tips of your toes. You use, lose some of the gripping ability that you get from uh, turning down the tips of your toes. You can still turn your toes, but you can only turn them at the first joint. You can't turn them any longer at the second joint when they use the flexor digitorum longus to replace the posterior tibial tendon. Flexor digitorum longus is not nearly as big and robust a tendon as the posterior tibial tendon, and it has to hypertrophy and strengthen in order to do all the work that the posterior tibial tendon normally did. When so when they use the flexor digitorum longus, um, it starts out here in the calf, the body of the muscle, and then it becomes a tendon, which is the attachment point for the muscle. The tendon runs behind the medial malleolus, across the navicular bone, and to what's called the knot of Henry. The knot of Henry is where it sort of splits off into four rays, and each ray goes to each of the toes. When they use it to replace the posterior tibial tendon, they dissect it at the knot of Henry from the other tissues, and they cut the tendon here at the knot of Henry, which is almost directly over the navicular bone, which is where they attach the tendon, which is where the posterior tibial tendon would normally be attached, at the underside of the navicular bone right about here. So now you have this same ten this tendon running down the back of your leg, sort of the same course as the posterior tibial muscle and the posterior tibial tendon behind the medial malleolus and attached on the navicular bone right where the posterior tibial tendon is supposed to be attached.
but instead of the damaged or weakened or ruptured posterior tibial tendon, you now have this flexor digitorum longus, a healthy tendon that hopefully will eventually grow in hypertrophy and become strong enough to maintain a normal arch of the foot. So you lose the ability to curl the tip of your toes. You can still bend your toes. You can still curl your toes. You can still use your toes for push off, but not the tips of the toes any longer. Those are no longer attached to any of the flexors. Now, if you think there couldn't possibly be any more that you could know about the flexors of the toes as it relates to posterior tibial tendon disorder, there's one more thing. One of the interesting things about the flexor hallucis longus, that's the tendon that moves the distal joint of your great toe, is that it can send some fibers over to the distal joint of the second, the third, the fourth, um, lesser toe. Um, generally, it doesn't send any fibers as far as the, the fifth toe here. But if your flexor hallucis longus sends fibers to your second toe, they'll attach at the distal um, joint of the second toe. And even after having the flexor digitorum longus cut in order to replace the posterior tibial tendon, you will still be able to flex the distal joint of your second toe. If you're lucky enough to have fibers from your flexor hallucis longus go to all three of these toes, then you'll be able to flex the distal joint of all three toes after um, the surgeon has used the flexor digitorum longus to replace the posterior tibial tendon. In my case, after surgery, you can see I can really flex that distal second toe. I can flex the distal first toe poorly because I have some arthritis in that toe from the bunion but I cannot flex the distal third, fourth, and fifth toe. So I have the crossover fibers that only go to the second toe. And that represents about, I think, 15% of the population. 60% of the population will have fibers that go to the first two toes, and an additional 15% of the population will have fibers that go to the, the um, second, third, and fourth toe. Now, I've been talking about the insertion of the posterior tibial tendon onto the navicular as if it's a simple, a simple issue. While the posterior tibial tendon does insert onto the tuberosity here of the navicular bone, and this is where the surgeon will usually attach the flexor digitorum longus when he is replacing the posterior tibial tendon with the flexor digitorum longus, or sometimes with the flexor hallucis longus. He'll attach it here at the uh, tuberosity of the navicular bone. But the posterior tibial tendon not only attaches at the tuberosity of the navicular bone, but also at the cuneiform and the cuboid bone and to the second, third, and fourth metatarsal. Those are the long bones here that go to your toes. So the insertion of the posterior tibial tendon is much more complicated than just, well, attach it to the navicular. So anyway, I was thinking about this as I practiced curling my toes in my um, surgical foot. This is obviously my good foot. And thinking about, um, you know, how your foot works, I think helped me with exercising my foot, just thinking about where these muscles were, where these tendons were, and what they were doing when I told them to move.